Thank you for joining us uh, for our 2015 AMATS annual meeting. I'm Curtis Baker, I'm the planning administrator of AMATS, and traditionally what we like to do at our annual meeting is to talk a little bit about the year in review, what's happened, showcase some of the things that we've been working on. Um, and today, I really wanted to focus on three areas of our work. Uh, first, projects, both which are underway and some which are just completed. Uh, then some of our planning successes, and then I'd like to close, uh, which Jason kind of alluded to, with some of the unique public outreach activities that AMATS has been involved in uh, in this last year. So in fiscal year 2015, AMATS funded over $22 million worth of projects. These projects included over $1.4 million of resurfacing uh, places like Barberton, Ravenna, and Ravenna and Rootstown Township. Uh, we also saw a number of bicycle and pedestrian projects getting underway in Stowe, Twinsburg, Hiram, uh, and Ravenna Township as well. Most of our AMATS projects that were funded and sold in 2015 uh, were in line with our Fix It First policy, as well as our desire to see more of pedestrian and bicycle connections being made. And obviously, with each project that gets constructed, there is uh, a great bit of utility, but what we wanted to do is kind of focus on just a few that are both under construction or have just been completed. Uh, First project I wanted to talk about, which sold recently, um, is the well-known Cotton Corners intersection, State Route 59 and State Route 14. Um, it will be getting improved. And the project has estimated cost of over $5 million to remove one leg of the intersection, as well as improve the safety and congestion of the entire area. Uh, digging through some old files as I was prepping for this, I actually found this old uh, article that was from 1985. Uh, and the main uh, gist of this was that we needed to start studying the Cotton Corners intersection uh, because there had been so many crashes and, and many deaths along the 14 corridor. So I'm not sure if the project has been in the works for 30 years, um, but I think it's good to see this project going forward and I think it will uh, add quite a bit of benefit to our area. Um, also underway this year is the removal of the Johnston and Spicer Street bridges uh, on I-76 and I-77. This is a $15 million project funded by ODOT District 4. Uh, and what we think is this is just a great example of a project that preserves our system um, and also at a lower cost in the future, as what they're going to do is replace three bridges uh, with earthen embankments and then relocate Johnston Street. And just by doing this uh, $15 million project, it's also going to reduce the maintenance costs on uh, what used to be bridges uh, by over $25 million over the life of the project through 2040. Um, and that's all thanks to these earthen embankments and removing some of the old bridges. And I, I just stole one image out of a, a PowerPoint uh, where you can look, looking down Spicer Street at the bridges and, uh, you know, I guess now you'd be driving to a giant hill of grass. Uh, but uh, it will look very nice and we really think that it's a great project and a great example of ways to preserve our system. Um, this picture was also just taken a week ago on State Route 82 in Macedonia. Uh, this is a large reconstruction project from Macedonia to the Twinsburg border. Uh, it's a $4 million job. It's going to reconstruct the road as well as add, tur add turn lanes and bike lanes. And really, it's a great example of a preservation project, but it's also adding uh, additional operational components and as well as infrastructure for bicyclists. Um, it'll also complete all the phases of the State Route 82 construction. If many of you remember, I think it's been now almost 10 years since uh, the Norfolk Southern Bridge where it was widened under there, and now the work going on at I-271 uh, at the ramps on 82. Um, and so this is the final phase uh, that'll take them all the way to the Twinsburg border. Another first, uh, Summit County's first Hawk signal. Um, this was installed by the City of Akron, uh, the Summit Metro Park's Freedom Trail. Uh, at Britain Road. And uh, the Hawk signal stops traffic mid-block, allowing users to cross Britain Road safely. Uh, it's another great tool that we think can be used, especially in mid-block locations, um, which can stop traffic and make people feel like they're still on the trail and cross somewhere safely. Um, it was installed this summer, and uh, we're really looking forward, I think, to uh, potentially seeing more of these in our area as they become necessary. And I think finally, uh, talking about projects, we'd be remiss not to mention one that didn't start this year, but got finished up this year. Um, and uh, this picture was taken in 2014 of a State Road in Cuyahoga Falls, south of Quick Road. And in 2013, the city began the $8 million project to 
to reconstruct the road, add sidewalks and bike lanes. This project took three construction seasons and it really has drastically changed the appearance of this corridor. So I wanted to give you the before and the after. Um, it is basically a 2.3 mile complete street uh, from Quick Road down to Graham Road. Um, and I think this was the uh, kind of from planning through the construction, this project has been a great example of not only improving a, pro a road and its useful life, but also adding features that will benefit all users. Um, and this is what it looks like today at the same spot. Um, and just for effect, if this thing will go back for me. Um, this was, uh, unfortunately, when I took my picture, I was not standing in the middle of the road. Um, but I think you get the idea. Uh, it's really changed the complexion of the area. Uh, it's a 2.3 mile complete street corridor. Um, and we're really proud of this project and we think it's a great example for the region. So shifting gears a little bit um, to planning, I wanted to touch on some of the work products that we've worked on, uh, as well as some of the successes we've had with our Connecting Communities grant program. Uh, this year, AMATS did complete its first road diet analysis, which looked at roads that would qualify for potential right sizing uh, based on factors like ADT and road width. Uh, the picture shows a portion of road diet complete on Copley Road in Akron. Uh, this project is one example of a road diet where four through lanes were reduced to two through lanes and a turn lane and bike lanes. Uh, the first real example, this is really our first real example of a road diet in the area. It was put, to, uh, put in place uh, a year ago or so, or maybe a little bit longer, um, and there are many more planned for the future, but we think, that, again, this is another great example for our region. Uh, also in 2012, AMAX worked with Ravenna, Ravenna Township, and GPD on a Connected Community <coughs> Planning Grant uh, through the old State Route 44 corridor. And as part of that planning grant, uh, one of the recommendations that was made was to complete a sidewalk, sidewalk from the city of Ravenna border south through Ravenna Township. Um, and this sidewalk uh, was a portion that if you see on the existing side um, where or the before picture is basically there was a mud track, a ditch, where people from a low income housing neighborhood continued to walk up towards the city of Ravenna. Um, this project was identified by GPD in the plan. Uh, in 2013, the Portage County's engineer's office applied for this project. In 2015, this project sold. Uh, and the fresh sidewalk is now on the ground. And uh, not only did they do that, but also, and here's another picture of the sidewalk, uh, it also got a nice resurfacing job on Prospect. And so the entire corridor has really uh, seen quite an improvement. Um, but we feel that you know, it was due to starting with that uh, Connecting Communities grant, identifying that, targeting it, and then being able to fund it is really what our program is all about. Um, and then I wanted to turn to Barberton. In 2013, AMATS worked with the City of Barberton and City Architecture on a Connecting Communities grant that looked at connecting the towpath trail from a new bridge, which is funded by the Barberton Community Foundation, to downtown Barberton. Uh, as the planning process went along, the corridor was dubbed the Magic Mile. And uh, from that, Barberton Community Foundation was able to request and receive from Medical Mutual of Ohio a $75,000 grant to pay for wayfinding from that bridge to downtown. So now, as you leave the towpath and head towards downtown, you cross a bridge and you enter the Medical Mutual Magic Mile. Um, and through that, the wayfinding signs lead you all the way, uh, roughly about through a mile of uh, downtown connectivity, take you places like the theater that you can see there on the right, um, and some uh, actually some new curbing and projects that were going on at the same time that we took that picture. And also, again, from that planning grant, um, Barberton went on to continue to add elements of the plan, which included this mural, which is directing you to their arts and entertainment uh, district at, uh, on Tuscarawas. And so, you know, the, and some of these things were recommendations from our Connecting Communities Plan that were small recommendations. I believe this uh, mural and wayfinding sign cost less than $10,000. But it was something that was identified and designed through our process with the community, um, and then through that was able to, I think we've seen a community really take that and take it to the next level and build it. And that's been something that we've always wanted to see from our Connecting Communities Planning Grants, and we're starting to see it more as these develop uh, throughout the last few years. So the final thing I wanted to talk about today was uh, outreach. And uh, in the past year, AMITS has updated its public participation plan. We did a relaunch of the website, cleaning up some things, as well as um, changing our Citizens Involvement Committee to be a little bit more accessible for members of the public. 
Um, but more importantly, I think, is what AMATS has done on the active public outreach, including things like Jane's Walk and Better Walk. Uh, in 2015, AMATS again helped organize walks in the greater Akron area to celebrate the life of urban advocate Jane Jacobs. These walks were intended to get people out of their communities and become better acquainted with their neighborhoods. Uh, over the first weekend in May, thanks to AMATS planner Phyllis Jividen's organization, uh, 15 walks were held over that weekend in nine neighborhoods in the Akron area, including walks in Portage Lakes, Highland Square, and Kenwood. Over 420 people it, uh, attended these walks over that weekend. Also, as uh, Jason mentioned, uh, in the spring of 2014, some of you were uh, able to participate in our AMAT Switching Gears conference. At that conference, Jason Roberts of Better Block came and spoke about creating temporary pop-up blocks in the community to encourage testing everything from road design to entrepreneurship. And in May of 2015, with the support of the Knight Foundation, the city of Akron had its first Better Block event in its North Hill neighborhood. Uh, for one weekend, chalk paint and temporary trees lined North Main Street as it was transformed from a wide, empty four-lane stretch of road to urban activity center with bike lanes, on-street parking, outdoor dining, and a bocce ball court. Um, here's another picture before the transformation, uh, con uh, it contrasted with the design, um, or the temporary design. And I think since, uh, since the project's success, City of Akron officials have been looking at um, how to put that bike lane in permanently, uh, really almost all the way from the All-America Bridge uh, to Cuyahoga Falls uh, on the northern border. Um, as we've talked about the last few years, Amitz has continued its summer tour of bike and brainstorms. Uh, we made stops in Hudson, Manaway, and next week actually with Metro Parks will be in Springfield Township. Uh, these meetings are putting public officials on bikes to experience riding the road and then brainstorming on ways to improve the riding conditions with members of the public. Uh, this year in Manaway, we were lucky enough to pair it with the Art on the Hill Festival which meant that our brainstorm took place while a string quartet played in the background, as well as glasses of wine being available, which for public meetings, I would highly recommend glasses of wine. <laughs> yeah, that's just my personal take. Um, finally, Jason mentioned this. Um, you know, for those of you that are, were at our event last year, you may have remembered Peter Kagiyama uh, speaking about the love of cities and his book for the love of cities. Um, and really what he wrote about was, and talked to us about, was about creative ideas to get people to interact with their communities. And following this suggestion, uh, the city closed the Interbelt a few weeks ago, um, which was covered well in the paper. Uh, get, guests ate a meal on the Interbelt and brainstormed on ways to use the space that's going to be vacated by the uh, AMATS, ODOT, and City of Akron funded Interbelt project, which will be taking place here next year. Um, which is a very exciting opportunity, and it really can uh, change what our downtown looks like in downtown Amherst. Uh, in closing, you know, we as the AMAT staff are very pleased with the work that's been accomplished this year, but we truly believe that it's the member communities, you all, that deserve all the credit. Uh, I think 2015 has been an incredibly productive year, and a year where we've explored some new ideas and challenged the status quo of transportation plans. And we look forward to continuing to do this work uh, in the coming year. And I thank you, and I hope you enjoy today's agenda.